Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord we God's life. All right, Internet. If you're a Lutheran, you love the large catechism. If you don't want to be a Lutheran, though, if you haven't realized it yet, this might not be the book for you. Luther is potent in his words. Luther is, is not pulling any punches at all. And so if this is your theology, if this is what you believe about God, it's beautiful. But if you don't want to believe what Lutherans believe, you're going to have a hard time getting around what he says. In fact, he's kind of rude about it. For example, today, this is one of the bigger punches in the whole book. Luther, in the large catechism about the Lord's Supper, would write, Now it is true, as we have said, that no one should by any means be coerced or compelled, lest we institute a new murdering of souls. Nevertheless, it must be known that such people as deprive themselves of and withdraw from the sacrament so long a time are not to be considered Christians. So there it is. Um, what he means here is that there isn't a minimum amount of times you need to commune a year before somebody can look at you and say, you're not really a Christian. I mean, we cannot compel you to commune X number of times to prove your faith. That is a murdering of souls. However, the question isn't what's the bare minimum. It's not. The question is, why don't you think you need it? Like, if you honestly don't think you need the Lord's Supper, you either don't understand what it is or you don't believe what God is promising about it. I mean, just look to the simple words of Scripture about it. Take the time. Think about what God has put forward in this supper. His very body and blood for you for the forgiveness of your sins. I, I understand that plenty of people get by in life without the Lord's Supper. They sleep well, make money, decent relationships, new iPhone, same thing is, most of these people getting by just fine without the Lord's Supper aren't Christians. Like, they wouldn't claim to be. They've never taken the Lord's Supper. The question isn't, can you get by without it? The question is, what does God promise you here? Because yeah, you can build for yourself certain things in this life without the Lord's Supper. The question is, is there more than just those things in this life? What does God promise in the Lord's Supper? Does it matter? Can you honestly show me from the scriptures that you say you believe in where you get these things elsewhere? Where does God promise you the forgiveness of sins, the strength to meet the days ahead, a food for soul, a, a communion with those who have gone ahead of you into glory that you would sing with angels and archangels and all of the company of heaven? Would you really just rather assume God would meet your schedule since you don't feel like meeting his? I mean, hear God's promises in, in his word about the supper. God is present in a truly unique and meaningful way to give you a truly unique and meaningful gift. His body and blood for you, for the forgiveness of sins. A closeness to God that nothing in this world rivals. A closeness to those who have gone before you into glory that nothing in this world can, can capture. When you pay attention to what God has given you in the supper, the discussion becomes a little bit different. It's not about minimums anymore. And then you also don't need to downplay the challenges behind it either. And just say, well, who would ever miss it? Of course I'm a sinner. Of course there's only so many hours of the day. Of course there's other things that sometimes my sinful flesh would rather be doing. And quite frankly, sometimes I just can't be in church, even if I would want to. But the Lord's Supper isn't given so that God would give you one more hurdle to jump over to earn your salvation. It is a gift given for when you stumble. That's what, in fact, Christianity is. It's hope in a merciful God who picks up this sinners whose lives are falling apart, and he builds us up not on the sands that shift, but on the rock that stands even against death. We are built on Jesus so that when the winds come and the storm comes, the house stands. The Lord's Supper is simply this. It's Jesus here for you, that you would take and eat. We're not trying to bash you about the Lord's Supper, but this is a gift that is given so that when everything else is falling apart, you wouldn't have to measure your Christianity on how well you're doing. You wouldn't have to measure how much God loves you based on whether or not you have a new iPhone. And you wouldn't have to recognize that sooner or later it'll break. Fall back on God's promises and then know this is what he gives to you as a Christian. Forgiveness, life, salvation. Take and eat. This is the body for you.